welcome. I'd like to now go ahead and introduce our second speaker, Ken Rinpoche Geshe Kachen Lobzang Tseten. And he is the currently the abbot of the Tashi Lumpo Monastery in exile um, in South India. It's a Tibetan Buddhist monastery uh, with more than 300 monks currently residing there. Um, and it's the monastery which in its original form in Tibet um, was headed by the Panchen Lama. Um, and so our Ken Rinpoche is um, sitting in for the Panchen Lama in the monastery in exile. Now, we've been hearing about collections. We've been hearing about 20th century collections assembled in India, and then um, more traditional collections by Rajput courtiers in Western India, from the, uh, primarily from the 16th through 18th centuries. Before that time, there were also collections of manuscripts in the Buddhist tradition um, that were housed in monastic universities, monasteries in India, especially northeastern India, um, such as places like Nala in, um, in Bihar, in northeastern India. Um, but in the 13th century, these collections moved um, wholesale, practically, um, through the, by, so such that by the end of the 13th century, manuscripts um, were taken along with high-level monks and abbots and monastic leaders from India up to Nepal and then up to Tibet. It's one of the big um, shifts, uh, the uh, sort of mechanics of which we don't fully understand. Uh, but it was a time um, in northeastern India when there was a great deal of instability politically with small kingdoms vying against one another um, for, uh, for power and uh, land in northeastern India. And these monastic universities not only housed great collections of art and were centers for learning, but they also housed great treasuries uh, from donations of lay people. Um, these treasuries were sacked, the monasteries were sacked, and um, for probably to fund many of the battles and skirmishes that were politically taking place in the, in the area. And so monastic leaders went to where they were invited, and that was up into the Himalayas, up into the mountains. We have colophons on manuscripts that were painted in India, um, saying that they were transferred by special monks um, from India up to Nepal. Um, and then there are records that are added on to the ends of the colophon stating that this manuscript was brought out and read on the occasion of the 60th birthday of a lay person's grandmother who funded a special, um, a special festival in her honor. Um, and then in Tibet itself, especially up into the 15th and 16th centuries, um, new monasteries were being um, expanded and major, and they became major political centers in Tibet. And so the form of Buddhism that developed in India, that disappeared in India by the 13th century, then is preserved in Nepal and Tibet. And now, after the, um, after the takeover of Tibet um, by the Chinese and the exile of His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Dharamsala in India, he has helped establish monasteries in exile that are um, the versions of the great monastic centers of Tibet in various sites in India. Tashi Lumpa Monastery is especially, um, is especially prominent in the biography of our speaker today. Our speaker uh, was born in Ladakh, which culturally was part of Western Tibet, um, but politically during the modern world today falls just over the bo uh, borders of China into India. So it's a place where Tibetan Buddhism has continuously been practiced since, um, since uh, about the eighth century without hiatus. It's unique in that way. Um, he entered um, a monastery at the age of nine, and when he was ready to pursue higher degrees in Buddhism, he traveled 800 miles by foot, on foot, uh, from his hometown, his home village of Stoke in Ladakh, which is just east of Kashmir in the t at 10,000 feet in the Himalayan mountains, um, and made the journey on foot um, to Shigatse, which is in south central Tibet. Um, there he studied at the Tashi Lumpo Monastery, headed by the Panchen Lama, um, towards his Geshe degree, uh, which is um, which is a long-term equivalent, sort of, of a PhD. It takes 25 years of study and practice. 
Um, he was studying there at the Tashi Lumpur Monastery in Tibet when the 1959 invasions of the communists came, and he uh, returned to his home um, hometown of Ladakh, and then continued his studies at Sarnath, the site of the first teaching of the Buddha in India, just outside of the city of Benares, where Rai Krishna Das um, assembled his collections at the Benares Hindu University. He was then invited to come um, to teach and study at a Tibetan Buddhist learning center and monastery in Washington, New Jersey. So he's one of the early members of the Tibetan monastic community to, um, to work with and, st and teach uh, some of the early um, founders of the study of Tibetan Buddhism in America. Um, so he, uh, starting there, he was then invited by Professor Bob Thurman, um, who uh, was then teaching at Amherst College in the mid-1980s, to, um, to give classes at the Manjushri Center there, and also at a series of colleges and universities. So he's taught uh, Tibetan Buddhism at Smith College, Amherst College, Bowdoin College, and other, um, other uh, prominent universities and colleges in, um, in the Northeast, and he um, he has a kind of major also dual role as the founding director of the Siddhartha School, an elementary school um, set up for the promotion of, um, of the preservation of Tibetan Buddhist culture as well as a, curri a curriculum of English and, um, and modern science and uh, math studies as well in his hometown village. Um, he's also currently the abbot of the Tashi Lumpa Monastery in exile um, at the same time at the invitation of of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. So I'd like to welcome to you today um, Ken Rinpoche, Geshe Kachin Lobsang Tetan, who will talk to you about um, a pair of book covers that um, are in the collection of our museum here that have been very um, little noted in the past, and they once protected a manuscript of the perfection of wisdom in 8,000 verses. And he will speak to you today about the context of such manuscripts um, in devotional settings settings in their original monastic settings. So welcome. Thank you very much. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today to present about uh, Tibetan Buddhism art. So uh, I'm lucky to meet my uh, daughter Sonia uh, Kundanila, long time friend. So today, again, she gave me an opportunity to come to here to talk about this. So I choose this you know, collection, which is the, the museum here I have. You know. So the, you know, it, it is actually a book cover in, in the 18th centuries, you know, in a collection in, from Nepal. So I want to talk to you about this, you know, how we use in Buddhist uh, monasteries and uh, the peoples. So I won't go one by one. Maybe I'll try to go. Yeah. Okay. Now <laughs> this is my practice. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> this. And uh, you can see this. And uh, the, uh, the. This is before Siddhartha came to in the world. You call the uh, Dushita Heaven Gems. He was the, you know, the head of the, in the Tushita gems, we call them, uh, the, the uh, we call it, uh, uh, then uh, here he's just to time to come to in the old world, so he give his crown to the uh, future Buddha, Maitreya, then he camped in, in this world, in uh, India, so here, uh, next one, okay, yeah, 
Then he got the, uh, this, okay, not for this. Yeah, yeah, there's a white elephant, and uh, his mother is sleeping. So when he's you now came to the world, the mother has in a dream, you now white elephant coming to enter in her womb. So there he started, you know, he you know, came to in, and then grow in mother womb, ten nine months, ten days. So next, this is why we have to do this. Now Buddha, many deeds. Now especially we have the twelve deeds of Buddha mean his history. So first we count from heaven realms. Then second. Then second, he was born in, a, in the dream, the mother. She was in, in, in Nepal, you know, Lumbini's area. So there. Uh, so then, what was the, the, according to our tradition, Buddha, not like us, he chose this place. He chose this, you know, before he came to the world, he chose the palace and the, the um, families and uh, parents. So the, that time you know, in India, more famous, you know, respectful, they said, you know, king, you know, the, you know, king lineage, so he chose that one. Then his parents are very respectful. So later he started to start his teaching is more meaningful, useful for others. Therefore, he chose this time also. Time also he chose, then you know, it's not early, not too late. Earlier, you cannot too much pleasure, and uh, then people don't have any interest to follow his teaching. And they come too late, it's in, then you have too much problems. So if you choose the time exactly, not too much problem, not too much you know, uh, happiness. That perfect, we have so sometimes mixing happiness and, and uh, suffering. So that perfect helps to how to renounce the world and uh, how to search the you know, final destination. So therefore, you choose this kind of, uh, Then, uh, yeah, next. Yeah, then after he was born, then he had this, you know, now the mother you know, holding this you know, branches of trees here. So here he is born. Then according to here, they saying the, the work the ladies met to helping. In according to in Buddhist in our Tibet in Buddhism, the you know, the Barma and Vishnu, in a very powerful uh, God, they came to there you know, when he was born, not he's not born as a like a ordinary human beings. He was born from her left side ribs, through the ribs. So the immediately she was, he was born in the Brahma Bindu came to him and they hold it in the special silk knot. Instead he tapping on the on the ground, hold it. Then then they hold it. So next here there's okay. There the but no, she's still holding. Next, no, uh, okay. So then he told Barma and Vinu, please let me drop. So he, they let me walk. Then we, he walked four directions. Now she, now four directions. One, he had each step in each direction. He steps seven steps. The each step, instead, he is now walking on the earth. They just grow under his you know, feet in the seven now. This uh, roses flower, one, two, three, four, seven, each direction. Then he rest told, I'm there's no, the only one here to no, no fear, no fearless uh, coming in this world. So therefore then it's gonna the okay, stop. Then according to in uh, Indian tradition, uh, we they call the you know, when you child have that then go to the you know, astrologer to ask the one signs of the child. Then the astrologer told their parents, you know, if he stay in the world, become as a you know, king, then he will, be, will be become universal king. If he want to become as a you know, monk, 
he'll be become Buddha. Of course, then his parents choose he become you know, not become you know, monk, try to stay at home. Then he got married, maybe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then he got married. Then you know, what could they? And now at home he's studying. Now the parent doesn't want to become monk and you know, doesn't like it. So they will really want famous to be his their child too famous. So they give homework, gives in the at home. And uh, so there he learned all this you know, technique, you know, all this you know, uh, what is this pop subjects and uh, language, everything. So she realized he's not enough learning this and uh, still he and uh, looking to get better in our studies. You know, he studied with the many scholars, learned not you know, Hindu masters. Still, he is not satisfied. So he, here he is showing this. And, uh, we could be here studying with, with the teacher here. Uh, next. Then, you no, know, after, you know, He's uh, learned, then he got married with uh, Sujata, very beautiful princess. Uh, then he, you know, he stayed at home until his age uh, 39. Have the beautiful son is the Raula. So still then he one day you know, really want to know this, the world, what happened outside the world. Then he you now got permission from his parents, he went to outside, then he noticed the three, four things that the aging, the so on, so on. So he really feel this is not the perfect, these beings need real guide and helpers. So he decided to try to escape you know, the, from the kingdom. So he uh, then he is you know, okay. now uh, they are you know, surrounded by you know, the king and uh, they know he is going to go away. But in the middle of the night he escaped with the you know, riding on his uh, horse and uh, went to you know, uh, in, uh, Naranjana nearby Abhut Gaya there. You know. So he did there you know, six year meditation. One, I want to tell you now the, you know, his, you know, the, before he become Buddha, we call in Junutundup, now with the Siddhartha. Siddhartha, I want to tell you now, Siddhartha is really, really great scholar, great scientist, great physician, very great, great, you know, uh, worked there in uh, the author. Now, he is, no, she's the person, uh, she's just uh, learning, looking, really, how can I help all other beings, all sentient beings? So that's only way he noticed, now, try to get himself to become enlightenment. Therefore, he noticed staying at home, no way to get help others. So he, he, although he is a beautiful wife, beautiful family, and a child, he is renowned them. Renowned them may not give up them. Now really he loved. Very strong, he, now he loved, but he thinks more others, how important others. So therefore he tried to escape, get better, you know, help and drink. he can help others. So he is running away. Eh? Then here, when he got in the Naranja, then there he cut off you know, his you know, hair by himself. We call then Rangjung Mene, the, the, by himself, no teacher. So he cut up. Then his hair took away the God and uh, the Burma Venus and the, the God realm. Then he you know, tried to meditate six years. So this is not here, you know, although he's. Beautiful, my princess, wonderful, everything has, but he is 
knew is not enough for him enjoying this king palace kingdom. So he looking for us how to can help him. So this in in Tibetan in our country, these are not like a show for in in the museum. These are we used in the in a temple monastery in the in the temple. And in the family house, each family has their sharon room. There they keep and we make offering. This is not the Buddha. This especially you saw the, the book cover. The 12 days of Buddha did book cover in the inside book there. We Buddhism believe in a, in a respect the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Those three all or Buddha mean the teacher. Sangha, Dharma, the teaching, Sangha, the spiritual community. Those are the important. So those Buddha, what is he noticed while he's studying at home, you know, there, the, he figured out that there are two kind of, two types of diseases we have. One problem, we have the physical problems. Another is the mental problems. Physical problems, no, we have more, especially these days, scientists figure out how can we cure our physical problems. That, you know, he mainly focused the, the more problem, what we have, inner problem, internal problems. That problem cannot cure with this, you know, the ordinary medicine, an ordinary doctor, an ordinary uh, nurses. Therefore, need the, the special doctor, special physician is the, now the prince that become the special doctor, special work with the physician, and a special, special scientist. He figured out how can we, he figured out how can we rid of, rid of all this you know, mental afflict emotions, emotion, how can we free ourselves? He figured out each of us have the seed of Buddhahood. That he figured, therefore he ran away. He tried to figure out how can he help. So therefore he ran, in and he's cutting his hair, all the beautiful hair he have now. Uh, the next, now after that, then he was doing in, in, the, in, a, in the forest, meditating, then there are the you know, cowards, children, you know, saw him, then really they're playing with him he, to loud music, noise to disturb his, you know, his concentration. But he is really you know, very calm, very peacefully, never pay attention because he had full of you know, compassion and you know, love and understanding of the nature Therefore, nothing is disturb him to doing continuing his practice. Uh, then next, while he is now after six years uh, finishing, then it, in the in the, in the air comes a voice, and I like a two, his in a meditation to try. The voice says not the guitar to lose or to with the, the guitar staying too loose or too tight, cannot make the so perfect sound. So that means he is doing too extreme, the not, not accepting you know, gross food. So then he gave up, tried to accept you know, ordi uh, ori uh, no, ordi ordin ordinary food. So that time this you know, village lady, we call Sujata. You know, Sujata, Sujata, Offer him what could we Indian you call kir and rice you know soup. So taking rice soup, his you know, strength become you know, strong. One I let you know in this two tradition in in Buddhism. One is uh, Mahayana Buddhism and uh, Hinayana Buddhism. There are two traditions actually. According to the in, in Hinayana tradition, these are his the ordinary acting, ordinary you know, thing. According to Mahayana, these are not ordinary, he's not all Buddha's deeds. So here showing his you know, his too weak, 
to help him, but this is not, not really happening according to in Mahayana Buddhism. This is just uh, teaching us how now the nature of the world. How can you improve yourself? You have the opportunity to study. You have to make effort, like me, even on a hit, rich enlightenment, took me six years doing the hardship. Therefore, if really you want to love yourself, you really want to help others, then you have make special effort. That's what he's showing. He's not just really according to the Buddhism. He's not in a ordinary means. He already reached enlightenment way before. Uh, next, you know, he's again, you know, she's you know, offering the rice to be a, you know, in the, in the you know, look like the corn. <laughs> so he's accepted that one. Of course, then he accepted that one. With him, he has the five you know, disciple practitioners with him. They get upset. So he lost his you know, practice. They escaped, you know, from, left from Bodh Gaya to went to Varanasi. Okay? Uh, then here, next. Now, from there, he had the Sujata <coughs> work with the rice soup. Then his energy comes up. Then you walk up to Bodh Gaya in the, in the, in the, under the Buddha tree. Then he decided there, he asked on the way, he met the, uh, with the Garasela man, asked him to give me a uh, kusha grass. I have a big purpose. So he put the kusha grass under the Buddha tree. Then he decided there, until I'm not rich in Latin man, I'm not going to grow move from the Kushagras. So then he is, did it there. Then the work with the evil spirit, the, the, the work with these demons get upset because he rich enlightenment is going to destroy their world. So they try to disturb him. So of course, uh, all male beings come to bother him, throwing stone, all kind of, but He's you know, already in Latin, it doesn't work. You know, all whatever they throw is turned as the flowers. You know, his power, his meditation power, their magic, their power doesn't work, although they are tired to do. Then it doesn't work, then later they send all the females to looking beautiful and dancing, singing, tired to disturb you. Of course, then it doesn't work. They are tick. So here. And they're throwing, you know, next. And then, then he's walking, then you know, they are the all very high level with the powerful you know, Hindu gods, you know, with the, they're just you know, making the council, they're all open, then these, they are tired to, you know, rainy day, maybe they are tired to protect the rain, this you know, snake, I don't know this one exactly, okay. The next, now, then he walked in, in, in uh, Varanasi, there. Varanasi, <coughs> he tried to, when he reached enlightenment, then he tried to teach the, what he learned for his former teacher. Of course, then in a six year, you know, been, meanwhile, his former two Hindu teachers are died. So then he noticed his you know, pipe, Aesthetic monasm who practiced with him six years. So I went to them, they were in, in uh, Varanasi. Then there, then he met his you know, five disciples here. So there then he taught the first work of the uh, teachings called Four Noble Truths. There, you know, he, what he found in the six, <coughs> six years meditating, he found this, the the suffering is not permanent. Suffering is changeable. Suffering, it has its own causes. Without causes, it cannot. So thinking now, now how the scientists figure this days, nothing is have its own independent nature. Buddha figured out all in you know, 2,005 years, 500 years ago, this thing. So everything he just learned they merely exists dependently, nothing exists inherently. That teaching 
to explain other that time cannot people not going to believe him no not going to believe him first of all he did notice there a particular creator and now he realized in through his meditation there are no particular creator existing the creator is in a notice the ego strong sense of me that is the real he notice to ego the creator but that want to explain people that time people not going to believe it. so therefore he just and start to explain them how we circle in the samsara we call the in a circle of life under the control of emotion what he know the you know the ignorance anger attachment those are the emotion that he figure out if you really fish, kill, free yourself you have to learn the obstacle the emotion like anger jealousy pride those are based upon ignorance the ignorance have to you know card of ignorance have to destroy it. there he noted nothing of the ordinary weapon going to cut of this ignorance so therefore he realized the best you know, weapon to cut of the ignorance is the, the wisdom wisdom mean which is really notice the true nature of the phenomena that's what he become i was, I was telling his special and you know, the and you know, scientist and you know, philosopher so he figured now still in you know, these days even at the scientists working very what you know, they physically really they you know, uh, what's it not very well about you know, but still scientists this day still you know, doesn't know how to figure out the the the, the mind working you know, how the inborn mind still the the hisun and dalama tell tall and the physician the physical way the scientists are very very in latin very good but the mental case they are little babies so he really they still now still you know, scientists are also thinking working how to figure out how really working their mind we usually talk here and not just talk brain 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 but we talk the mind the mind now have to figure out what his mind is what is the nature of the mind is how man he can change it or not how the you no know, big is the universe the universe in buddhist you know much bigger bigger you know, than sentient beings are he notice limitless so there for then he is in just you know he got there he told the poor noble to do first day, to do suffering think think you are sad no if you you are not notice you have suffering no you don't you know pay attention to your illness then you cannot you know you danger you going to cause it therefore he first give to do suffering then suffering helps you no know, their suffering is going to disturb my life if their suffering is changeable or not then he figure it is changeable is there any technique or any antidote overcome from this illness yes then they you know it is the second novel through the not the work of the true cessation you know the to cause of cause of suffering what is cause of suffering as i mentioned the ignorance attachment anger jealousy proud uh, wrong viewers those are the real cause to suffer us in samsara individually our problems and uh, society problems world problem based upon ignorance attachment anger not based upon problems the other our enemies according to his figure out all sentient there are no enemy no all sentient being like your mother so we have to have if you want to live in the world with peace love and care each other then you have to learn how to recognize all beings like your mother that's his one message the teaching what he talks about ahimsa best in a best in a not harming other first of all there are two messages you know, the teaching not harming ourselves other and have compassion toward others all sentient beings if you have love 
compassion for all Xinjiang beings, then you have done on a, don't have any problems. So therefore, his message was then uh, the the work of the the cause is the ignorant attachment. Then of course you you know this and uh, this sickness. Then you find the, the the causes of your disease. Then you feel, oh, if I'm free from those, no, this in the sickness, the causes, then I'll be happy. Then you come the third, to do cessation. What cessation means get rid of, of all your emotions, like ignorance, anger, attachment, those are. That's a free. Then those freedom. Then comes the, it's not just certainly spontaneously happen. Those freedom also depend upon its causes. Then the third one he told them, the true path. So actually among in the, the four noble truth, two true first two noble truths have us how we are circling in the samsara under the control of afflictive emotion and action. Then second two truth have us to how to get out from the samsara. Out yet mean not you have to move up, but mentally. No, you can read up that this emotions are, he says, impermanent, changeable. So then, really, we have freedom, really, we have happiness, really, we have the joy. So that's what he have in, what he, in a Bodh Gaya, in, a, in Varanasi, he was you know, teaching the Paul Nobatri for his you know, for his disciple. Then also here the Barma being all, according to in Mahayana tradition, there are many all beings are there. So next. So he finished after now after he 39 years old, he left from the house. Then in a 40 year, 41 years, you know, he really taught the teachings. So then while well, what first he for the four noble truth based upon four noble truth in, in uh, Varanasi, especially with the disciple and the practitioner we call it in, uh, the Hinayana, like a uh, partakers Buddha and uh, with the hearer and solitary realizers there. Then second, after that he finished them his base in uh, went worked in in the Rajgiri near and, uh, uh, Padna, Rajgiri, they are the, we call the mountain called like a uh, vulture, vulture thick. There, there he gave the, you know, the second uh, turning of the teaching we call the best upon this uh, perfection of wisdom, wisdom sutra. That really the main disciple was we call the Yogacharya school. No, sorry, the main disciple was this in a Mahayana Madhyamika school. So he's, in a, that time he talks, you know, in Varanasi, he told all, everything is, has identical, identical, identified. It has its own nature. Then second time he said, no, nothing exists inherently. If everything is merely exist dependent so on so on. So that makes sort of contradicting his in a, if you if you don't judge it, it makes first he say all phenomena has its own reality in own true nature. Second time say nothing is exists. Then there come question what you are talking about. Are you contradicting yourself or you're not? So maybe you're not contradicting. Then then he began the third uh, and a third teaching in, the, in uh, <coughs> other places. So there, then the main disciple was Yogacara. Then he made the distinction, what was you talking about when uh, nothing exists, what you know, the, the distinction there. So then, after 40 years you now, when 80, 81 years you now, uh, then he passed away here and his Mahapari Nirvana. Mahapari Nirvana, called the, here, it's not like us, ordinary death, okay? He's just showing us impermanent, changeable. If I'm dying, of course, you are going to die. What do you do? Really, you want to you know, die free, freely, happily? Then you have to practice, change your you know, behavior, bad behavior. 
try to become like me, to become you know, good human being, uh, honest and uh, respectful and uh, stay calm. So therefore, he's showing here now, he's in a Pari Nirvana here, then mean that, you no, know, he doesn't go on way. Okay? According to in uh, Theravada tradition, he is finished there because the ten, you know, the nine, among the 12 deeds, the nine, you know, nine, uh, ten, tenth, eleven, ninth, and tenth, and uh, ninth, he is you know, rich in Latin men. Tenth, he is you not, know, uh, no, tenth, he is rich in Latin men. And eleven, he is you not know, the, uh, uh, taught the teaching. Then uh, twelve, he is Parinian one. Those three, they consider Buddha did. Because before that, Buddha's body is you know, not pure. He is in you know, a former karmic result. Therefore, then Mahapari Nirvana, meaning me free from the physical when we reach enlightenment. According to in Maha, Mahayana tradition, all this are he's showing us as a teaching us how you know, Buddha did. So, so here, this you know, sort of this, you know, sorry. so this you know, Mahapari, you know, after 81 years, he, then he passed away, showing a case. You know, the beginning he started. No, impermanent. Talk about the uh, suffering. Then in the middle also he taught all the, the changing, impermanent. Then last he is dying, he just shows his, you know, his body told them impermanent. So impermanent is the best method, technique for us to practice, to change ourselves. We have the, you know, we don't have the idea of impermanent. We have all the, I'm going to live in the world forever, sort of, until you are now dying at the bed, doctor gives the prescription, you're down in a, uh, you know, three days going to last, and but yourself sitting there, I'm not going to die, and the, your family, friends are preparing your funeral service, but you still know. Expect I'm not going to not go. Therefore, important, really want to live in the world yourself with peace, love, practice impermanent, and try to have the, we call the bodhicitta, altruistic mind, respect other, then your life meaningful, useful, then yourself become meaningful for the world. So, thank you so much for um, uh, your patience. <laughs> this my. Thank you so much, Genla.